What's up, you guys, and welcome to Ready Sex Chat. We are in second season. I am so happy to be here. And I know you guys probably have missed me a little bit, so it is time to get a drink and catch up. So, what am I drinking today? You probably know it. I am probably doing some maybe bourbon and ginger ale, or maybe a glass of wine. Who knows? Why don't you go on to the Instagram at Ready Sex Chat and you can find out exactly what I'm drinking because as soon as um, this is being posted, you will get to see it live on the Instagram. So a lot has been happening in the last week. I mean, there's just been so much going on with uh, relationships and breakups and a lot of people pregnant and all of that. And I had a question on Instagram that said a lot that had questions about pregnancy and definitely asked about why aren't all porn stars pregnant which i get it it's definitely a major question because you think you know sex and fucking and why isn't everyone pregnant so we're going to touch on that today and we're also going to touch on what i think the future of porn looks like I know that there is uh, definitely a different generation that's coming into watching us and there's a brand new generation of performers. So we're going to touch on those main topics. So sit back, relax, grab your drink, grab your cock, grab your cocktail, grab someone's pussy, whatever you're going to do, and let's have some fun. Before I begin, I want to make sure and let you guys know that I have so much respect for all the moms and all the dads out there. Believe me, I love me some MILFs and I love me some DILFs. However, that's not what this show is about today. Today we're asking and we're going to talk about the pregnancy scares that we have on set. Now, why is it that every bitch isn't pregnant? I know that's a really big question. And first of all, let's dissect why you care. Why do people care if a bitch is always pregnant or not? Because a fascination of main middle society, I guess, you know, average Joe, average Jane, who watches our movies are fascinated by the fact that all the cum and all the jizz is all over the chicks and all over their faces and all over the pussy, whatever, and they don't get pregnant. And it's like... Well, in your everyday life, I'm assuming that if you're in a relationship or whatever it is that you're in, the guy is probably coming inside you, which is very much the basis of, I consider, a real relationship. And then you have the aspect of the industry that is the money shot. And you saw that on Boogie Nights and you see that in a lot of other movies and the money shot is exactly that. So without the money shot, there is no porn. And I know there are cream pie scenes that a lot of you guys and girls love to look at. And those are very interesting because not all of them are real. (gasps) What? Are you kidding me? Is it fake? How could it? How, How could that be fake? Oh, yeah. 95% of the time, I'm sorry to break it to you guys and girls, but the cum shots inside, the cream pie scenes that you all love to look at, nope, not real. And those cream pie scenes usually occur one of two reasons. One, that's what the movie's about. It's either a vaginal uh, cream pie scene or an anal cream pie scene. And then the next reason is that the guy just couldn't get hard. There's also the reason that the guy came too fast and now he's limp. Oh yeah. Many of the stars of our days have had those issues and those problems. And for it to, if I'm already, if someone is already doing a movie and you're already 25 minutes into it, the last thing any of us bitches want to do is another 25 minutes. We're exhausted between pile driver, between any other crouching tiger, hidden dragon, It's already strenuous. So if the guy doesn't come on time for the money shot, now you have a wasted material. Now you have a wasted film. What are you going to do? I'm not coming back. None of the girls that I know want to come back that day. So the key to faking it is a cream pie. 
So a lot of times you'll see a, a really solid scene and then maybe a cut or something just looks a little funny. And then the girl says, oh, yeah, oh, please just just come inside me. Just explode inside me. Mm, so good. Mm, mm, mm. And she's looking at him. He's looking at her. He's like, I can't do it. I'm not. It's not happening. Fuck. I, I need to get home. I got dinner to make. I got kids to pick up. Not me, but others because I don't have kids. <laughs> and or I have to go to school. Like, I, what do I do? Okay. Well, the answer to that is just oh, come inside me. Just come inside me. Boom. There you go. Cream pie fixes it all. So don't be alarmed. There's many, many chicks in our industry that take the cake and take all the dirtiness out of it and really, really do. I'm, I can't name names now because I can't think off the top of my head. But there's many girls that have that animalistic and true porn star quality and they just want it in them from anyone and everyone. Amazing. Got a round of applause to them. That's not me at certain times. Um... But if it's been a situation where the DVD calls for it and I'm uh, dating the person or I'm married, as you guys have known, then absolutely. But a random stranger, no, you just fake it. So sorry to burst that bubble for you guys. That is an, one of the biggest and oldest tricks in the book. Now, the pregnancy is a little bit of a tough situation because as the new generation of performers are popping up, no pun intended, there seems to be a dirtier, more classic porn coming through with them because I think they're younger. So I feel like the younger generation of performers are a lot less, I wouldn't say careful, but they're a lot less They just don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? And those are your, you know, Riley Reeds, et cetera, that are just, they're going in and you got to love them for it. The older you get, the more you're thinking of yeast infections or um, pH balances. If the guy's uh, cum doesn't match with your pH, that creates a smell. And then the whole set is going to smell like ass. And This is going in a little bit deeper than most people are comfortable with, but that's what you're here for. You're not here for for me to sugarcoat anything. So, so when the, so when the older generations and I consider myself in, in that genre of adult performers, we think about those things. So a lot of those cream pie scenes just don't work well. So as I was going with the younger generation is that because they don't give a fuck, I don't want to say that they're less careful, as I mentioned before, but they do have that sort of instinct of knowing when they're ovulating, which I had no idea. Oh my God. When I I lost my virginity when I was like 20, but you know, 21, 22, I had no fucking idea when on earth I was going to give birth to another human being. There was no way I was could, there's no way I could find out. I was wasted the entire time in college and I was probably ovulating while I was doing a kegger. So I wouldn't even know myself. And these girls, I applaud them because they know to the day. So they'll very much avoid those types of scenes. And then there's a basically essential method of pulling out. And obviously because you have to see it for it to be a money shot. There it is all over her or him, you know, whatever you're watching. So with that being said, as I am in the industry actively, et cetera, I myself have not come across many situations, if any, where the actual girl has gotten pregnant on set. If they have, it's not something that maybe is known or maybe my my close knit of um, girlfriends within the industry. None of them have. And uh, you never know what's going on behind anyone's door, you know, in, inside anyone's room. So that's just my own personal experience. And it's very much a 
fun topic that comes up quite a bit. Like, wow, you know, how do you guys like not get pregnant all the time? Well, we have we have certain tricks up our sleeves that most people should be doing themselves too. <laughs> and then this brings us to the wonderful topic of the future generation, as I touched on it. And where do I see porn going? Where do I see adult entertainment going? Well, it's a lot of, there's a lot of different variables because obviously we're seeing a, a huge spike on you know, voyeur and uh, amateur at home uh, projects, only fans, some of your favorite celebrities have their only fans up and running and that's, they're not even showing skin because only fans isn't a porn site. This is what a lot of people are forgetting. Porn is your browsers.com. It's your reality kings.com. It's your mofos.com. It's digital playground.com. It's not OnlyFans.com. OnlyFans is a platform that you can engage in and that you can upload, but it's not necessarily porn. So when celebrities go on there, I get it. And if you, you know, I've heard a couple of my other episodes where I kind of really go in on mainstream, it's because of the way they behave towards us. But it doesn't mean that I'm saying or thinking, damn, why are all these fuckers on the internet now? No, there is plenty of room for everyone and their magic is in my magic and vice versa. And I am very well aware of where my fan base is and they have their own fan base and everyone is working. Everyone is entertaining. Fine. Not a problem. But where I see the future of porn going is very interesting because this pandemic has opened up the, the, uh, can of worms, I guess you want to say, of interaction. And fans, I believe, feel that much more attached to certain performers or even mainstream because now this whole work slash, well, I mean work because I mean, it's fun what I do, don't get me wrong, but it's still, you know, it's still work, it's still entertaining but now we're that much more open because I can't go on set. Uh, other female performers and male performers aren't necessarily on a set as much as we have been before. So we're a lot more open to being able to answer your questions and r- really get to know you and you get to know us, which is brilliant and wonderful. But that never used to happen before. And with the DMs, etc., where does that leave the beauty of the the magic of porn? Do you, as a fan, want to see the big uh, major productions? Are you happy with the girl just waking up and saying, hi, baby, and sending you a private picture? Do you want both? And I think a healthy mix of what's to come will be those entertainers that get it. Those entertainers that get who their fans truly are and who truly care. This isn't, this is more like a hunger games of like, who's the fuck is going to survive? Because if you don't pay attention and if you don't read the room, you'll lose, you'll lose it. You'll lose your fans. You'll lose, um, whatever it is that you're trying to build. And we hope I hope that it's organic. I'm a set performer. I've, I've said that from the beginning and will always, I am someone that thrives with a script. I thrive with a crew. I thrive with two or three cameras and I really shine in a character based performance. Now you all are getting to know the real me. (laughs) There is no performance. Now, on my browsers plus, I do upload exclusively when I do shoot for browsers, um, because we still do shoot in very uh confined and law abiding situation. It's you should see it. It's like literally it's it's bare bones. There's no makeup artist, it's really bare bones. So I upload it on browsers plus because obviously I am contracted. So I want to make sure that both my fan bases are taken care of. 
My OnlyFans is super intimate, super raw, super personal. And my browser gives you that extra finesse, that extra push. And sometimes I mix it both, you know, once in a while. But for the most part, that's how I divide it. Now, that's just my little uh, recipe that I found that works for me. So I know that I have a lot of my female listeners from all over the world, and I am so thankful for you. I love you all. And when you give me your questions about industry and being a female in it, et cetera, this is one of those advices and one of those tips that I want to give to you. And it's also an insight to the fans as to where our head is and to where I feel things are going. And those performers that don't understand the game of interaction will lose from the jump. And it's a new world for us because the major productions don't have that. Obviously I go on set and it's a focus on what I do that day at work. But by having that interaction, it's a whole new sort of source of entertainment for anyone who becomes a member and who joins and who's a fan. And then I realize that through my engagement on OnlyFans and Brazzers, I'm gaining the fans of the podcast. So now I can offer live shows, which I do. And whenever you see it on Instagram, you know, just go ahead and give a look if you'd like. No, you don't have to. You don't have to do anything you don't want. But if you want to see uh, where I I sometimes just go in a little bit naughtier and even more so because it's free for all. Apple's Spotify, uh, it's mature, but there's a certain point because I can't see or I can't control how old my audience is going to be. I'm hoping that everyone is, you know, 18 and over, 21 and over, because these are such adult uh, conversations, which is what OnlyFans and Browsers Plus has been so great for me because I have my Twitter on private most of the time and I'm very clean on Instagram. Why? Because the audience, I am unable to pick apart and control. I, it is none of, it is not my job to take care of your kids and what they're watching. I am a grown adult. You are a grown adult. You're watching it con- consensually and I'm making it consensually. So it's a dynamic and a give and take of power. I'm entertaining you. You're of age and so be it. Let's move on and have fun. But with the podcast, I haven't quite seen that being able to be done. And oh, who knows? And now that I'm on the network um, with the, if guys, you didn't know, we do have a home. And thank you so much to the <laughs> podcast playground. And there, the I want to be as available as possible for as many generations, because I think a lot of the topics that I share are important. And I know it's a little tricky that it comes from a porn star, but hopefully it gives you guys a little bit of more overview as to what it is that truly goes on in one of the most notoriously taboo industries ever. And I mean ever. As for me, I'm really excited to tackle directing. I have been in the game for, you know, 10 plus years and it's everything that I have taught myself as to how to be the best performer that I can be. I would love to share it with the future generation, but also I believe so much in providing quality entertainment. So as I start diving more into directing, I really see this new vision that there's a vision that I have for the future of the industry. And I think it will be so neat and it'll be so dope (laughs) to share it with you guys visually. And even as myself, as I'm sort of figuring it out and what it is that I want to put out there, I think I got it. I think I know And as I start working my way into it, you guys will always be the first to know. 
And I feel that it will be something that I can not only be proud of, but something that can hopefully open up visually the industry to something new. And I will share that with you when the time is right. (laughs) And that is it for today's episode. I hope it gave you a little bit of a taste and sort of a different perspective as to the good old question of the getting pregnant (laughs) on set and what I see for the future of the industry. Remember that these are all my own experiences and what I consider to be sort of notes and information that I would like to share with you. And as the season goes on, I'm having guests come on, I'm having friends of the industry, and more and more, you'll also hear other points of views, which is very important for me to, for me, for you to hear. (laughs) So hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for joining me this week. As always, find us at Ready Sex Chat. And thank you so much to my new home at Podcast Playground. And if you don't know, now you do know. You can see live shows on my OnlyFans at www.onlyfans.com slash Bridget B. Look at that. I am just everywhere for you at the moment. (laughs) And on Browsers Plus, of course. Thanks again, and I will see you next Wednesday live right here. Bye. Be sure to rate, review, and most importantly, subscribe wherever you pod. Bridget B. Ready, Ready, Sex, Chat. Chat.